finally, here's the disaster door. This is a 28 inch door that's supposed to go into this opening. It's only 27 and 3 quarters at the top. And 27 and a half on the bottom. Well, it looks like the head's about a quarter of an inch out of level. Check the sides. Well, that's plumb. But it's not straight. There's a good sixteenth of an inch crack through here. Check the other side for straight. And there's a bulge in the middle. Well, these are conditions you often run into in old work, and the door will have to be fitted to the jam. All right, this door should be pretty snug. Push it up tight to the top and put a shim under the bottom to hold it. Now I cut the door by measure and it just fits in the opening. Now I'm going to try to do all the scribing at the same time so I don't have to take it down each time and do one operation and then put it up and take it down again. As you see the head's not level. So instead of using my scriber, I'm going to use these wood strips. I often use these instead of shim shingles because they're parallel all the way through. And I've chosen these because one is a sixteenth and one is a, an eighth. And I'll use the sixteenth on the hinge side and the eighth on the latch side. I'll just double them up and scribe down the, the line. Okay. The latch side gets an eighth. And the hinge side gets a sixteenth. Next is the hinge location. I'll just use seven inches here. And when you mark the location for the hinge, you want to mark it both on the jam and the door at the same time. So use any kind of a straight edge. And it's a good idea to mark the hinge location because a lot of them have been put on the wrong side of the line. Down here on the bottom, I'll use 10 inches. I'm going to make a second mark on here because this is going to be the space left on the top of the door. And when I put the hinges on and put this back in place, you'll see these two lines registered. And the same thing on the top hinge. Now all I need to do is plane down to the scribed line. I'll make short strokes with the hand plane first to cut away the waste, then some long strokes to smooth the edge. I don't use the electric plane because this is a crooked scribe line and the long bed of the electric plane wants to cut straight. And that's it for this side. Now the hinge side is up and so I'll mortise for the hinges so I don't have to turn it around again. And that's about it. All right, now I'll flip it over and plane the other side and put the bevel on at the same time. Now that the sides are done, I'll cut the top. And using a finely tuned handsaw can be easier than a plane. Now it should go up without any problems. But I'll see you in just a minute. Hinges are mated.
pin's a little hard to get in. Do the bottom one. That's better. Now I'll close it and check the margins. Well, it looks pretty good. Here are the strips that I used to scribe it with. There's that one. And there's that one. It works. Well, that's the last door I have for you. And even though these doors and windows haven't been complicated, the procedure is the same for any door or window. I've been doing it for a long time. When you do yours, just take it easy and work accurately and you'll get it. Good luck.